Hey guys, Joey here, and in today's video, I'm gonna go over one of the most fatiguing sounds to mix, the cymbals. In any mix, cymbals usually take up the highest frequency content, but they can also have a ton of harsh mid-range. It's an EQ and balance challenge, but I've got a few tricks that make this headache much easier to manage. I'm gonna cover how to mix both sampled and live cymbals, so let's get right into it. Mixing cymbals from a sampler is usually much easier than a live recording. The samples are already processed to sound pretty good anyway, so there's not as much EQ needed. Just filter out any excess low end, and then find the harsh frequencies and reduce them until you're left with a pleasant high end. Then I like to put a little bit of compression on the track. Since this sample track has bleed from the drum shells, this will even out the transients to keep the focus on the cymbals. I like to take the harshness reduction a step further with an algorithmic softener like DF Clarify. These types of plugins match your cymbals to a noise profile that cuts problem areas, which makes the whole thing feel brighter. Check it out. The main challenge with using samples is getting them to gel with the rest of the kit. Some samplers allow you to add bleed from other drum sources in the overhead room or cymbal tracks, which automatically makes the drums sound even more cohesive. But what if the artist sends you a song to mix with an already printed cymbal track that has no bleed options? Then I go to the next step, which is bus compression. Sending the drums and cymbals to a bus with a compressor glues everything together. This is because each time a kick, snare, or tom transient hits the compressor, the entire drum performance is ducked. That means that when the snare hits the threshold, the cymbals come down a little bit too. Here's how I dial that in. Now that the drums are playing into each other, I'll add a little bit of reverb. A drum verb has a similar effect as the bus compressor as it makes different samples sound like they're playing into the same room. I usually like the reverb after the compressor on a low mix or even a send, but if you're going for a really vibey rock sound rather than a super clean metal sound, you might want to try moving your plugins around in a different order. Awesome. These symbols are sounding really clean, present, and connected to the rest of the kit. Now, let's try the same thing with a live drum kit. In a live drum recording, I'll be getting most of the cymbal tone from overheads, rooms, and spot mics. The overhead mics are typically a pair of condensers or ribbons about 12 to 18 inches above the cymbals on either side of the kit. Spot mics are basically the close mics for the cymbals. I like to use these on any cymbal that needs a lot of detail or is very important to the song. Sometimes this can be like the hi-hat, the ride, the china, the splash, or really any other distinct cymbal. I like using a condenser six to eight inches away from the cymbal. The last common source for cymbal tone is going to be the room mics. How far away they are really depends on the room, but typically I'll have a few condenser or ribbon mics a few feet away from the kit recording the whole thing. The orientation and mic choice depends on the room size and genre, as well as what aspect of the kit is supposed to be emphasized. Ribbon mics are warmer and will pick up more of the mid-range of the kit, while condensers are brighter and they will get more transient and symbol information. 
These drums were recorded in a super small room, like many of the recording spaces that you usually have when you're starting out. So the challenge with recording live cymbals, especially in a room like this, is that the drum shells are going to bleed into those cymbal sources. I can reduce this by cutting some unnecessary information from certain mics, like toms and cymbal spots. This is really important because when I compress these sources, it'll bring up everything on the track. If a floor tom is close to a ride cymbal and I want to totally crush the floor tom, I'm going to get really loud and nasty sounding ring from the whole song. With the cymbal spot mics, it's the same idea. The mic choice and placement is perfect for capturing the hi-hat ride or china, not the snare or toms. Editing these tracks will save you a ton of time down the line, so it's important to get it right at the start. Now onto these cymbal tracks. I'll do a little EQ and compression on each mic, then send it all to the same bus for some processing. On the bus, I'm going to start with more EQ. I don't want my cymbal processing to smear the kick sound, so I'm going to do a high pass. Now I'm going to look for any frequencies that are harsh and constant. Every recording is different, but most tracks have a buildup around 500 Hz and 3K. Okay, with the frequencies tamed a bit, it's time for more compression. I do this to even out the transient information on the drum shells. And even though I've flattened out the performances on each track, those transients build up together when combined in the bus. Cool, now the cymbal track is a little more manageable. I can get it way cleaner with Clarify. Just like the sampled cymbals, I'm gonna use this plugin to cut away some of those resonant frequencies that we don't like and let that clean high end through. Cool, that's way cleaner. Now I'm just gonna throw on the drum bus compressor and we'll be in the ballpark. Whether it's a live recording or a drum sampler, cymbals are a tricky thing to get right. Watch out for harshness and bleed. Be careful not to cut too many notches out of the cymbal tracks, or you're just gonna end up with something that sounds like white noise, which will get lost in the mix. And that's it. How do you approach cymbals in your mixes? Do you have any go-to ways to get them sounding pleasant? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to check the links in the description below and tap that bell to get notified whenever we upload new videos. Until next time, happy mixing.